happy. I see that today we're going to be watching a video of David's favorite show, We Sing, which you know what it reminds him of? The Lion King. What will we learn today? Our goals to learn how most brains process information, to learn how Gestalt processors' brains process information, to use feeling words in descriptive language instead of memories because sometimes people don't understand me, to make David or anyone feel good. How can we make David or anyone feel good? Yeah, that's what we're going to talk about today. So I highlighted in blue the goal that we are going to focus on today. Anyone, not just David, anybody. Right. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. What do good girlfriends do? One, how to be a good girlfriend. A. Right. So I want you to think and I will fill out your answers. What do good girlfriends do? Hmm. What do good girlfriends do? Liking th a lot of things he likes, but we don't like, it's okay to, to like different things. Definitely. I like what you said, liking a lot of what things, he but yeah, because no everything. one's the same. No, but who's the same? No one. No one is the same. Guess what? He likes milk. I don't. I like lima beans. He doesn't. <laughs> You're right. And that is so okay. Liking a lot of what he likes, but not everything. It's okay to like different things because everyone is different in their own unique way. Yes, I love that. If everyone was the same, it would be so boring. So I like that. Everyone's different and has their own interests. But a good girlfriend will try to like the things that her boyfriend likes, but not everything. Hey. What about one hey. more thing that good girlfriends do? Use their feeling words, spend time with them, have sleepovers at their boyfriend's houses or condos or apartments. What? Spending time. Maybe a sleepover. E. Right, that would be good. Okay, I think these are wonderful. Let me it's read it. A, liking a lot of what he likes, but not everything, most things. B, use their feeling words c spending time e.g sleepover right i like that so we talked about quality time sharing interests and then using your feeling words great stuff i love those examples that you came up with on your own this is what I filled out. Okay, what do good girlfriends do? One, how to be a good girlfriend. A, listen to your boyfriend. B, talk about, talk to your boyfriend. C, spend time with your boyfriend. D, be interested in your, boy, in your boyfriend's favorite things. I think we basically answered that question the same. Yes. How are you feeling right now? Um, a little nearsighted. Have you ever heard of that feeling nearsighted? Have you heard of it? No, I haven't. It's when you're nervous and excited at the same time, kind of like killing two birds with one stone. Wow, that makes a lot of sense. Nearsighted. Do you want a stim toy to help you? Yeah. Just so you know, I'll be right back. I'm going to go get my thing where you fidget with. This is my toilet. Okay. It's all different colors. This looks like a DNA thing. Oh, yes. You showed me that last time. Cool. Yes. Okay, great. Maybe that will help with your nerve-sighted feelings. Okay, wonderful. So we can go back to the slides. 
We both answered that question of what do good girlfriends do the same, which I'm so happy to see. Now we're going to list out some of David's interests. Um, Barney. A lot of famous people were on that show. Yes. We sing. We sing. And Power Rangers. Oh, cool. I liked that show. Too. Power Rangers. Is that two words, Power Rangers? Yeah. Okay. You know, you know who was in Barney, Selena Gomez, and Demi Lovato. Oh my gosh. You were? I love them. Was Britney Spears in Barney when she was a kid? Was she? I think she might have been. I heard Ryan Gosling was in it. Oh, that's cool. So these three interests. Are these things that you are also interested in? Yeah. Well, I just want to learn. I did watch a little bit of Barney growing up. But when I was really little, want to know one thing. I got a toy version of Barney and then for my birthday. And then I literally walked away from it because I wasn't interested in toys. I felt disconnected. Oh, Okay. So it had nothing to do with Barney. You just didn't feel connected to toys. Yes. Okay. You know Barney's a dinosaur. Big purple dinosaur, right? Yeah, and dinosaurs now are extinct these days. Right. When David talks about his interests, how does it make you feel? Um, prepared, like, um, a bit interested, like, unique. It makes me, depends. We all like different things. Yes, that's true. And we don't have to be interested in everything that David is interested. But is it nice to be a good listener anyways? Of course. Yeah. I'll just, I'm, I'm just doing the best I can. I'll just try my best. Abby, that's wonderful. That's all we can ask of you. I know that Barney or what other shows like, um, oops, sorry, I have my notes here, but I must have left them upstairs. I know there's other shows like, Veggie tales, Teletubbies. Those those um aren't really interesting in just like how you know what the show that David's not interested in is Elmo's World. Just like how David doesn't like Elmo's World. Right. Okay. David doesn't like Elmo. Yeah. But he's but he does like Sesame Street, and Elmo is from Sesame Street. Huh. Okay. So he he can talk about Sesame Street, but not Elmo's World. Ah, but last time I mentioned Elmo and David was like, I don't want to talk about Elmo. That's I, he's I've heard him say that before. Okay, right. So when David mentions Teletubbies or Veggie Tales, do you say I don't want to talk about that? Something like that. Just like how when I mentioned Elmo, he didn't want to talk about it. Just like that. He doesn't. Right. I don't bring up Elmo in front of him. That's good, Abby. That is a nice thing to do. Mm -hmm. So the count looks scary, but what? He's not he scary. He just looks scary. Just like how I dressed one time on Halloween three years ago. I dressed like a scary bride and I wasn't scary. It was the makeup that made me look scary. It wasn't me. It was the makeup. Right. You were trying to put scary makeup on me. Wow. And I, you know what? I look forward to dressing like a scary scary zombie like in michael jackson's thriller i hope they do that to me what if i turned into a werewolf just like michael jackson <laughs> and I, I grow fangs yeah for halloween and for dress up i think yeah and i grow whiskers and i grow claws yeah. i hope they do that to me they just put like 
fake fingernails look like claws. Yes, I love that. See how scary I look. I be that for Halloween. I want to dress that way for Halloween. Kind of like Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah. So, Abby, could I finish my question to you? Yeah, of course, of course. So, we were talking about the Count and how he may look scary, but what does he teach children? Counting! Yes. And is that an important thing for children to learn? Of course. We watch a clip. Are the characters on the show real or fake? Why do children's shows exist? Let's review the character and script. Good reading. So before we watch the clip from We Sing, I want to know, are the characters on the show real or fake? They're fake, but there's two little kids in it. They're, they're probably now grown up now. Yes, probably. I think I think they are like almost like in their 30s now. Yes, because that show came out in 1994. The year The Lion King came out. Lion King had its 30th anniversary. Right. That's what you said in the beginning. They have the same release year, right? So the characters are fake. Why do children's shows exist? To help them support so they can learn, like how they need to go to school to learn. Very good. Like Very I could be their teacher and they could be the students. Yes. Maybe I could, David and I could be good caregivers. I think so. Abby, you're so loving. Thank I you. They're working with two adults on the spectrum. <laughs> yeah. So you're right. Children's shows often teach children things. Like, I know a children's book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Oh, yeah, that's a great book. And when you think of The Little Mermaid... I've, every yeah. time I see a little girl, I've I've seen a little girl in an aerial costume. Oh. They can be interested in Disney princesses. Right, yeah. I think a lot of little kids are interested in Disney princesses. Is there something that The Little Mermaid teaches us? About she wants to be on land but her father told her not to so remember how firm king triton was mm -hmm. he was very firm with ariel he was very firm because he wanted to protect her right it's for protection that's how all parents are with their kids want to protect their kids exactly and then what was ariel's punishment her father destroying her hum human stuff right yeah that was her punishment and how did that make ariel feel how did that make Ariel feel? Sad. She cried, but I didn't see any tears because she's under the water and you can't, you're not supposed to see them. Oh yeah, that makes sense. So she cried and then she made that mistake of trusting Ursula, right? Sea witch. Yeah. She's creepy, but... So maybe the movie teaches children... Not to trust strangers. Right. So let's review the characters and the script for We Sing. We Sing. Casey Garcia, Andrew Goodman. Those are the two kids. Arnold Petru. The cowboy. Are, th are, they, are they adults now? Probably. Yes. I think they are. They're like in their 30s. I think so. Oh, yes. So Casey Garcia is the name of the actress who plays Casey in the show. Andrew Goodman is the name of the actor that plays Carter in the show. Mm -hmm. Arnold Petre is the name of the 
harmonica cowboy. Terry Q. Swenson is the name of the guitar cowboy. Adair Chapel is the name of Tusky. So there is a human in that elephant costume named Adair Chapel. The voice of Tubby the caboose is, I can't see it on my screen, so I gotta move, is Deborah Ann Lund. Deborah and Ann Lund. yeah, Hank and Cart Cartwright. Very good. The voice of the train is Hank Cartwright. So these are all paid actors. Let's look at the song that they sing in the show. Okay. It's called Chisholm Trail. So we'll hear this song on or in the clip. And we will also see this script. So we have the train saying certain things and the cowboy and Cubby the caboose and Carter and Casey. They are all saying- Are they brother and sister or friends? I don't know. That's a good question. If I go back, it looks like they could be friends. They don't look that much like each other, right? But now they're adults now these days. Oh, yeah. They are now. They are now. That's correct. Adults it's were children once upon a time. Very true. Yes, they were. Good. So now that we looked over the characters the song, and the script, we're going to watch the clip. Are you ready? Uh-huh. Questions one. What was the video's lesson? What were they trying to teach kids? Two. How can you do this experience to connect with David? Good reading. So the first question is, what was the video's lesson? They were teaching the kids a lesson like they were like on the middle of, of the country, something like that. Sure. Okay. So you're right. They were in the middle of the country, right? With cowboys and cows. But it didn't look real. It looked fake. Yeah, it was a fake set. Was it CGI? Was it special effects? I don't think so. Because it came out so long ago. Since you know what it came out since it's since there was dial-up internet. Right. Back. CGI. Remember that sound? Yeah. Back. <laughs> I do. I know you don't like You're that. staticky. It was pretty staticky. Right. So we are going to answer this question. What were they trying to teach the kids? Very staticky. Instead of watching the clip again, we will just read the script. Okay, train. Uh-oh, where did Tusky go? Cowboy with guitar. There he is, caboose. Oh, no, look, he's right in the middle of all those cattle. Tusky. Hi, aren't they great? I just love cows. Casey, please be careful, Tusky. Yeah. Right. This, yeah, sorry, you can keep Carter, reading. cowboys can be dangerous. Cowboy with guitar. Now don't move young and keep calm, Tusky. No problem, guys, I I'm fine. Those cows, like, they like me. Whoa, hey, watch out, watch out, out. My foot. Out. Oh, guys, I think I'm out of here. Carter. Tusky, are you okay? And then the cowboy with guitar. Those cattle came. Get mighty restless. Cowboy with harmonica. You're a strange looking steer to them. Well, calm them down. A cowboy. Tr 
train. Well, it wasn't safe, Tusky. You should have as cowboys if it was okay. Tusky. Yeah, you're right. I guess I should have. Carter, did you get hurt? Tusky. Oh, yes, my foot, my foot. It does hurt. I'm sure I'll need a note aid. Caboose. Oh, I knew it. I knew someone would get hurt. Come right over here and get out the first aid kit. The note. Aids are there. Then Casey. Come on, Tusky. Let's fix you up. And then Tusky. Okay. Great reading. So, after reading that, what do you think the show writers were trying to teach children? That's that someone got hurt. That's what it's about. Very good. Someone got it. Got an injury. Someone got injured. Tusky got injured. How did he get injured? What happened? Tell me what. Yeah, tell me. How did Tusky get injured? Did Tusky get his foot stepped on by a cow? Or did- Something like that. Right, here are the two options. Did Tusky get his foot stepped on by a cow? Or did a cactus poke Tusky? Just poked him. You think? I think, I think, I think a cow accidentally stepped on him. Did he do it? Was it an accident or on purpose? It's a great question. I think it was an accident. And you can see right here, Tusky says, no problem, guys. I'm fine. These cows, they like me. Whoa. Hey, watch out. Ouch. My foot. Oh, we got a cow I stepped on him. Right. Good job. So Tusky got hurt and he got hurt because he did not ask the cowboys if it was okay to walk with the cattle. So the character got hurt because the character didn't ask permission to go walk with the cows, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you think the writers of the show are trying to teach kids? That you need to be careful when there's a cow nearby. True. Yes. You answered oh. what was the video's lesson. So can you answer number two? Two. How can you try... Do this experience to connect with David. How can you use this experience to connect with David? About what it's about, the big rock candy mountains. I didn't understand. What did you say? Yeah, like to learn more of the songs from We Sing, like whenever we go to Travel Town, which I was going to get a Travel Town, but then COVID hit. Hi. My name is Ryan Sutera. I'm a speech language pathologist working with Abby towards her goals of becoming an even better communicator. One of those goals includes being able to talk about others' interests in a way that feels comfortable for her. And sometimes people's interests are things from the past, nostalgic programs, children's programs specifically, and she really wants to work towards being able to talk about those things without thinking of the past and bad memories. So I thought the perfect way to do this was to take a real life example from her life, which is David, her boyfriend's interest of We Sing Train, a program from 1994 that Abby actually has no personal memories with. So before we started treatment, we said our affirmations and then we also discussed what it means to be a good girlfriend and to think about things as a professional. So let's talk about how this relates to autism. 
a lot of autistic people have special interests and don't always see the value in talking to others about things other than their special interests. Now, this is not true for all autistic people, but certainly it is okay if they do feel this way. It's okay if you only want to talk about your special interests for years. We can do that and I will feel connected with you. But the difference here is that Abby does want to connect with David about his favorite things. What I really like is that Abby makes it clear that everybody is different and everybody has different interests. This is beautiful and something you really want to affirm because we don't want autistic people to think that they have to force themselves to like things that other people like. That's not the case. You can like whatever you want, but it's about meeting people in the middle and being genuinely curious in some of their favorite things. Even still, talking about children's programs does bring up some anxious feelings for Abby. So I made sure to check in with her and she told me that she was feeling nerve sighted, a word I had never heard before, but is certainly a great description for those anxious feelings. In this moment, I asked her if she would like a stim toy to help regulate her and make her feel more relaxed. And she definitely did. So this is another good point for autistic people. If you're anticipating anxious feelings or if you're noticing the autistic person doing a nervous stim, ask them if they would like some regulation strategies. So like I said before, our plan, our mission was to break apart one of David's favorite shows, We Sing Train. Talk about the characters, the script, and the lesson that that children's program was trying to teach kids. When we were talking about characters, it made Abby think of her own favorite characters from Sesame Street. She mentioned that the count looks scary, to which I was affirming. And I tried to ask the question, yes, the count looks scary, but does he teach the kids anything? But in the middle of thinking about scary things, Abby thought about Halloween and thought about Halloween costumes and other scary things. Now, a lot of people will say this thought is off topic and they will cut Abby off in the middle of the thought to return to their point. I would not recommend doing this. If you work with neurodivergent people, or if you support neurodivergent people, you will see this a lot. They have a thought and you really should let them finish that thought, let it run its course, and then redirect what you were saying back to your point. So in this moment, it looked like I said the count Abby went off on a little bit of a tangent talking about Halloween and scary things. And I talked to her about that, let it finish. And then I said, can I finish asking you my question? To which she said, of course. <laughs> so this is really important. Use this with your neurodivergent loved ones or the neurodivergent people you're supporting. It's really neurodiverse affirming. One of the last things we can learn from these clips is another neurodiversity affirming care technique, which is at the end, I asked Abby, what lesson was this clip trying to teach children to which she did not have an answer. Now, instead of watching the clip again, the clip that made her feel nerve sighted to watch, we went back and reread the script. This is important any time that you can find a way to get the answer to the question in a way that makes the client feel the most comfortable is the best way. And finally, we reached the end of our session and Abby came up with a way to talk to David and connect with David about one of his favorite shows by talking about what happened and also talking about the music, learning more of the music from the show which I thought was just so fabulous. She came up with it independently and also it really shows her gestalt language processing brain to think about learning songs in a way to connect with David. So that is everything. I hope you learned more about autism and neurodiversity affirming practices. And if you're interested in continuing to follow this journey, please subscribe.